Hey, Tim Schatz here again for C4D Training. Today I have a little tutorial for you on using the object buffer when you are going to be spinning objects or moving things. I'm going to continue on with my phone object that I was using in my multi-shader tutorials. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a screen to the front of this that we can then apply a video or a picture to in After Effects. And so let me just kind of show you here what is going on. So we have this little animation of the phone spinning and then stopping here. Okay, spin, and it moves forward and then stops. And so here on the front of the phone, we're going to just create a screen that we can then put this image or movie on. All right, so let's take a look at what our goal is here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set my phone back to its starting position. And I'm going to go ahead and add a plane for my screen. So I'm just going to create a primitive that's plane. And by default, the orientation is plus Y. For this, I'm going to go ahead and switch it to minus Z. And then I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees and if I look in my top view here I can see here's the front of my phone and so the way I want it is I want the z-axis to be pointed back and I want the x-axis to be pointed pointing towards the right and then the y-axis will be coming up towards us from the top view so here you can see the y-axis going up all right so I'm gonna go ahead and actually go back to my top view and I'm just going to move it forward so I know kind of where it is. And that looks like it's probably pretty good. This black line here is my the actual face of the phone. So I want my screen just a hair in front of it. I don't want it to be look like it's floating, but at the same time, I don't want it to be intersecting with it at any point. So I'll come back here, and now I can see that my phone is, or my screen's a little big. So I select my plane. Go ahead and make this 125 and say like 200. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to move this guy up. And there we go. Now I have this null object here. It's in my group with all my pieces for my phone in it. And those are the ones that rotate. Well, you notice my screen stayed where it was, and that's because it's not inside that null, so I go ahead and just throw that in the null, and now when I rotate this, my screen will rotate with it. All right, so a couple of things I have to do to my plane in order to get the data out to After Effects so that it has the actual 3D data. So what I'm gonna do is to my plane, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add an external compositing tag, and that's the tag that takes the 3D information from this plane and puts that into After Effects. So that 3D information will be applied to whatever video or image we use instead of this plane. And so that footage then can rotate around. And I also need to add a Cinema 4D tag compositing tag. And on my object buffer tab, I need to go ahead and enable buffer one. Okay, and I, I need to change the anchor point of my plane. So in order to do that, I have to make my plane editable. So I select my plane, hit the C key. We come up here to Structure, Axis Center, Axis Center. And usually by default, these are set to 0, 0, 0. And for our case, we want the anchor point to be in this upper left-hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to negative 100 on the X. So that moves it all the way over to the left. And then on the Y, I want to go ahead and set it to 100%. And Z we would use if we actually had thickness to our object, but we really don't. Uh, just to be safe, I'll go ahead and set it to 100%, which means it will be as far forward as it can be. And we can hit execute, but with the auto update and editor update there, it'll do it. But just to be safe, execute, close that, and now our anchor point is up there. And then with our external compositing tag selected. We have this thing that says anchor point, center. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure it's at the top left, just to doubly make sure that it's as far up in that left-hand corner as it can be. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead to our render settings. And under the general tab, we wanna make sure it's at full render. 
output, I have mine set to the size of my tutorial, so I can show it to you full size. And then under frame range, we want to make sure that we're set to all frames. And I know my animation is 120 frames long, so it goes from 0 to 120. And then on my save tab, I've gone ahead and entered in a location and a name for my file. And I've set it to a QuickTime movie. I want to make sure that I check alpha channel so that my image is knocked out. And then here under the compositing project file section, I want to make sure that that's selected to save. It's set to After Effects. I want to include my relative and include 3D data. And the 3D data, that's the information when we put the external compositing tag on. That's going to be what enables the external compositing tag to take that information and allow you to use it in After Effects. And then under multipass, we don't have anything right now, so I need to go ahead and add my object buffer. Make sure it's set to group ID 1 because that's the ID that we set it to when we added the compositing tag. And notice I add my object buffer, but my multipass section is still not checked on. So I'm not quite sure why, but that doesn't automatically get checked when you add something to it. So you got to turn that on to make sure you have it. And then once you've turned on the multipass section, if you go back to save, we now have this multipass image section here. Just check to save, and then we have a name for our file. If there's not one there, you just enter it. And I'm going to go ahead and do it as a QuickTime movie. And that stuff should all be set. And I'm going to go to my anti-aliasing. And instead of geometry, I'm going to go ahead and set that to best. And on my filter, I'm going to go ahead and set that to animation. And that should do it, so go ahead and close that. And we'll go ahead and render this off. All right, so that's gone ahead and rendered. And if we look here, here's my history. And I can see the files and the frames that it's rendered. If I click on my layer, I can see that I have my alpha and my object buffer here. And if I scrub through this, I can see in my object buffer window here, that that white square spins around and disappears so you can't see it when the phone is facing backwards which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and then we'll go ahead and switch over to After Effects. Alright so here we are in After Effects and I'm using CS4 so I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my phone. So Cinema 4D created this file called phonespin.aec so that's an After Effects composition file and in order to use that, we need the plugin from the Maxon website. And if you look at the After Effects tutorial we have previously on the site, it's using the, an emitter in Cinema 4D to create particles in After Effects. It's the one with the meteor crashing into the city. It explains where to get the plugin and how to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file. And it brings in all of my things that were created from Cinema 4D. So if I twirl down my buffer rotate.c4d, here's my composition. So I double click on that, and there's my composition. And you can see the motion path with this null, and that is our surface image here. And if I go ahead and scrub through that, we can see that that spins around with the face of the phone. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in some images to put on the front of my phone. And I'll grab these three. And what I'll do now is I want to replace my plane with one of these pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and do my Cooper handsome fella. He's my one of my little kitties. So what I'll do is I select the plane. And I select the picture up here. And while holding down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, I drag that over the top of it. Okay, and you'll notice that it's now in here, but if you look, you can see the outline of the image, but you can't see the image. It's because by default, for some reason, when it brings it in here, it sets the opacity to zero. So we're just going to go ahead and dial up our opacity. And now you can see that my image is way too big, so I'm also going to scale it. So we'll bring them down. Whoa, there's the kitty. And so now, as I do this, 
Notice how I can see it on both sides. That's because we're not finished yet. So the next thing we need to do is we need to apply a track mat to this. And that's where our special passes comes in. So here's my object buffer movie. So if I take this and I put it over the top, so here's my image and then here's my new movie. And the rules of track mats are that you put the mask, or the thing you want to use as the mask, above the image you want to use. And then on the layer of the image, we select our track mat. And if this isn't available, remember just hit F4 and that'll switch and bring it up. And so now on my image layer, I select my track mat to be Luma mat and it'll be the layer above it. And so now I can see my little kitty. And as I spin this around, he stays to the front of the phone. So if I do a quick RAM preview, there's my kitty boy. Okay. But now let's say I'm doing a different project and I don't want him on there anymore. I know, hard to believe. I wouldn't want him on there. But then let's say that I want my little girl kitty on there. So all I have to do is select the next image that I want. I've got that layer selected. I hold down Alt or Option and I drag over the top of it. And now there's my girl kitty. And if I do a ramp preview of this, there she is. And in case that wasn't enough cuteness, go ahead and select that layer again. And I'll take another picture, hold down Alt, and drag it over the top of it. And so the scale on this one's a little bit different, so I just changed my scale. And we'll just dial it up there. Notice I can make it as big as I want, but because the object buffer track mat is cutting it out, so I can just go, you know, maybe about that big. And now if I RAM preview this, there I am with my puppy dog. That's Piper. Okay, so that's the nice thing about doing it this way is that you can swap out images. So if you were doing, say, a commercial for somebody and they wanted to have something different on the face of the phone or the face of the television or whatever object you're using each month, you can render this off one time from Cinema 4D and swap out the images. Hope you found that helpful. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.